Welcome to Worship St. John's Lutheran Church and friends. It is good to have you joining us for worship this Palm Sunday. Today marks the beginning of our Holy Week celebrations and our journey to Jerusalem. So on Thursday evening, we will worship at 6.30 here in person. On Good Friday at 2 o'clock and 6.30 here in person. And on Easter Sunday at 9 and 10.30 in person. Also, there will be online worships. And so uh, watch those. Uh, we will have those posted as close to those times as we can. Be part of this journey as we go with Jesus into Jerusalem to the cross, and to our resurrection celebration next week. A couple of announcements about our life together. This past Sunday, we started a conversation, a congregational conversation with the transition team. Know that that time was recorded. If you would like to have a copy or receive a copy of that recording, please let the office know or follow some links on the website. We'll get that set up soon. Also, um, if you would like to add something to the conversation, know that we want to hear your voice. And so you can do that. You can drop something off. You can mail it. You can email it. You can just get it to either myself to or to Laura or to Kevin Opperman, uh, the congregational president, and it will be incorporated into the conversation of the transition team. Thank you for being here today. We are better with you here. So at this moment, let's just close our eyes, and prepare for our Palm Sunday celebration. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. We praise you, O God, for redeeming the world through our Savior Jesus Christ. Today he entered the holy city in triumph and was proclaimed Messiah and King by those who spread garments and branches along his way. Bless these branches and those who carry them. Grant us grace to follow our Lord in the way of the cross, so that joined to his death and resurrection, we enter into life with you through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us go forth in peace. In the name of Christ. Amen. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Everlasting God, in your endless love for the human race, you sent our Lord Jesus Christ to take on our nature and to suffer death on the cross. In your mercy, enable us to share in his obedience to your will and in the glorious victory of his resurrection 
who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Hello, all you children of God. I'm so happy you're worshiping with us today. Okay, that might have seemed a little bit silly, but today is Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday, the day that Jesus rides a donkey into Jerusalem and the crowds give him all the praise they can. Hosanna, Jesus, Hosanna. Now you may not have palm branches like these, but you do have palms like this. And when you hear Jesus or you hear Hosanna during worship, I want you to wave your hands and shout, Hosanna, Jesus, with us because we celebrate Jesus with everything we've got. Have you ever done that? Somebody is coming down the road that you love and adore and you've been waiting for so long and you run out of your house and you're just so excited to see them. Or have you ever been waiting for somebody in the airport and you're waiting and waiting and waiting and then they finally come and you're like, oh yeah, I'm so happy you're back. Hosanna, Palm Sunday is like that. We shout with joy, we wave our hands. Jesus is here. Will you pray with me? Hello, God. Thank you for the joys we find. The reasons we have to celebrate. And thank you for sending Jesus. Jesus gives us a lot to celebrate. We love you, God. Hosanna. Amen. Thank you for joining us, and I hope you have a Hosanna day. The first reading comes from Isaiah, chapter 50. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear, to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me, who will declare me guilty. The psalm is Psalm 31. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for I am in distress. My eye wastes away from grief, my soul and body also. For my life is spent with sorrow, and my years with sighing. My strength fails because of my misery, and my bones waste away. I am the scorn of all my adversaries, a horror to my neighbors, an object of dread to my acquaintances. Those who see me in the street flee from me. I have passed out of mind like one who is dead. I have become like a broken vessel. For I hear the whispering of many, terror all around, as they scheme together against me, as they plot to take my life. But I trust in you, O Lord. I say, you are my God. My times are in your hand. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies and persecutors. Let your face shine upon your servant and save me in your steadfast love. The second reading is from Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 11. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard taking equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God is also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, the glory of God the Father. Our Palm Sunday reading 
of the gospel comes from Mark, the 11th chapter. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say this. The Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? They told them that what Jesus had said, and they were allowed to to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat down. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. This is the gospel of our Lord. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our salvation. Amen. Don't you just love a parade? You know, all those things that you get kind of caught up in, and you're part of a crowd on the side of the street, and you just wait for whoever it is to throw you some candy, right? A friend of mine took a new call, and in the church she was at, they had a procession every Sunday morning. It was quite the ordeal. I was talking to her son, and I said, so, do you like your new church? He goes, yeah, we have a parade every Sunday. Don't you just love a parade? I know I said this a couple weeks ago that I wish I'd been a mouse in the corner of the temple when Jesus got a little irritated, right? I think I would have liked to have been one of the crowd cheering Jesus on. We've seen a lot of different sides of Jesus recently. We saw that side of him that gets kind of righteously indignant. I talked about that. We've We've seen the side of Jesus where he's very loving and patient and kind with those who keep coming to him for healing and wholeness. We've heard him being a teacher with the great crowds of people and with his disciples and challenging his disciples to be more than what they knew they could be. And here, I just wonder what was in Jesus' mind Even though he told the disciples to go out and get a colt, did he really think there was going to be a parade? And that he would be the focus of it. You know, the Israelite people were waiting for this Messiah. They were waiting for this Savior, this one who would come and bring them back to whatever they dreamed they should be, But the Messiah they dreamed of was not Jesus. The Messiah they dreamed of was this mighty king, this one who would slay their enemies like a giant. The one who would say to them, you are saved. You are safe. But here's Jesus He's all these different things, and he's certainly, of all the things that he was, he was not an earthly king. He was not at all what people were expecting, but he was more than what they were expecting. 
They didn't expect a king to heal them. They didn't expect a king to walk from place to place in common garments and with dirty feet in sandals. They didn't expect that. They expected something different. But they got oh so much more than what they could have dreamed of. So this day, Jesus is entering Jerusalem, that holy, holy place, the place where the temple is built, the place where the sacred of sacred is. And people were gathering around, coming on pilgrimage to Jerusalem because it was that time of the year when they did that. The place probably was really loud. It probably was really stinky. It was probably really crowded. And here's Jesus in the middle of this crowd in a parade riding on a donkey. I thought a lot about that scene and I thought, hmm, who would I put on a donkey today? Who would I follow in a parade? Who would I stand beside the road and wave palms and shout Hosanna for? We have some heroes. We have heroes from our history. We have some heroes today. But who is it that you would stand alongside the road, take your coat off, lay it on the road, wave your palms and say, I'm so glad you're here. Hosanna. You know, we come to this place, to this time together, whether you are worshiping with us at home or with your friends or whether you actually come into worship together in this space, you take some time out of your week every week to do that. And if I'm generous, you maybe spend an hour and a half doing that. What happens to the other 166 and a half hours during your week? Does coming into this place, into this time, into this worship make a difference? Does it change who you are? I had a conversation with someone recently. I said, you know, we've been wearing masks for almost 13 months now, and I can't tell you the number of times I'm halfway into the grocery store and go, oh, I forgot my mask again. It's like impossible to change our behavior. I can't change yours for sure. The only person I can sort of change is me, and I'm still doing the same old thing after 13 months. So what difference does it make that you come into this space, like I said, if I'm generous, into this time for an hour and a half every week? Does it change what happens out there? Does whatever happens happen in, is happening inside here make a difference out there? I think for the people that were gathered around Jesus that day as he came in, riding on a donkey in a parade, I think for the people alongside the road, that moment made a difference because of what was going to happen in the next few days. But they didn't know that. Not in that moment. Does encountering Jesus make a difference? In that moment, it did for them. And maybe there are times throughout their life they will go back to that moment and go, remember when they're sitting around the Thanksgiving table sharing stories, 
Remember that, and it becomes one of the family stories that is repeated every year. But I wonder, I wonder this year, this Palm Sunday, if anything that's happened in the last 13 months to our routines, to our normal way of being, to the things we couldn't do or shouldn't do or wouldn't do, what difference does that make in our life of discipleship? Does it make a difference? What Jesus do you encounter on this Palm Sunday? What Jesus do you encounter who rides that donkey in a parade? And when you encounter that Jesus, does it fundamentally change anything? Does it change what you do with the 166 and a half hours until you come back here again? Well, I think I hope so. In fact, I pray so. Certainly for you, but absolutely for me. I want to be different. I want to be transformed. I want to make a difference out in the world. And maybe, just maybe, the parade this year, that parade filled with palm branches and hosannas, maybe, just maybe, that will happen this year. Amen.
During our Lenten journey, we confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Dear God, please help us all get COVID vaccines and for them to work. You are so God. Dear God, help us to remember to clean our waters, oceans, seas, rivers, and streams. You are so God. Dear God, help us for everyone to have a lonely, someone to talk to you. And for everyone who is poor to have at least a couple of dollars. Hear us, oh God. Dear God, we hope that Um, You keep Oregon safe and healthy, and uh, and we hope that Oregon doesn't have to go back in the lockdown again. Um, um, God, thanks for our hearts to save us from anything that could kill you. But Oregon has food or water, but maybe it doesn't if you look there. But can you're the God, dear God? Oh, make sure there is peace and justice in the world, and help us to create peace and love um, to everybody. Hear us, O God. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. I invite you at home to gather bread or crackers, grape juice or wine with you so that you can join together in this meal of Jesus. Holy God, our living water and our merciful guide, together with rivers and seas, wells and springs, we bless and magnify you. You led your people Israel through the desert and provided them water from the rock. We praise you for Christ, our rock and our water, who joined us in our desert pouring out his life for the world. On the night before he died, our Lord and Savior took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life, death, and resurrection. We await your salvation for all this thirsty world. Pour out your spirit on this holy food and all the baptized gathered for this feast. Wash away our sin, that we may be revived for our journey by the love of Christ. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. 
Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us in the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. This is the Lord's table, and you are all welcome here, for the gifts of God are free. I invite you to take your bread and know that this is the body of Christ given for you. And with your wine or juice, know that this is the blood of Christ shed for you. And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, give you strength and peace today and into your life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. God of steadfast love, at this table you gather your people into one body for the sake of the world. Send us in the power of your spirit that our lives bear witness to the love that has made us new. In Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now until we meet again, receive this benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve our God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Mm -hmm.